Oh boy, chat, we continue onward. It is recruitment time. We are trying to lock down another top class in the nation. Because damn it, it's what we do. Deeds, you indeed tuned in at the perfect time. We have 12 scholarships left. We already have a top 15 draft class, or prospects class, I would say draft class. Let's see what we got from here. So really quickly, we are in first for the vast majority of people. Let's talk to Victor Walker. I was totally that New England kid that would buy a UMass hat. And <laughs> I mean, shout out to you ass though, right? Let's trash talk Oregon a little bit. Trash talk Oregon a little bit more. I think I had a UMass visor in like sixth grade. Because a UMass hat just wasn't enough. I needed a UMass visor <laughs> to be the whitest kid alive. What a beautiful time. Beautiful time. Uh, let's see, Mr. Long, we'll talk to you for three hours. So we can schedule that visit. I love how Oregon's like my biggest competition for a lot of these teams or a lot of these players out of these teams because I can shit talk them a ton. Uh, Danny Davis, talk to you for a little bit. I don't know if we're going to stay in first for this guy because Notre Dame can uh, swoop in and cause a lot of issues, so that's not looking too good. Uh, the athlete in Kevin Hicks, how good are you to find out for sure? Uh, plus one. Not quite confirmed. Talk to you for three hours. Get you that visit. And again, I just can't trash talk Notre Dame. As a Canucks fan, can I get thoughts on Danton Heinen? He's fine. <laughs> what we might get back for Vertanen, not much. It's kind of the general consensus for me. Guy says he's in the top three stage. We could totally make a play for him. So yeah, Danton Heinen is a, a fine third line option right now for calling a spade a spade. I don't think you can view him as too much more than that. And uh, yeah, Jake for Tannen. I know I wouldn't be too ecstatic to see the Bruins end up with him. So it's pretty much all I can say. Better than Vertanen. I mean, probably on par with Vertanen. I don't think you could claim he's uh, significantly better or worse. Rich, you're on fire tonight, huh, bud? Coffee is good. Let's see, Chris Coleman. Give you a bucket of pucks. A puck bucket with no pucks for Vertan. I mean, I thought Canucks fans liked the guy. <laughs> Is this because early on he went to a bar without a mask? Remember that? He was one of the... I wouldn't say one of the first real people I saw get a lot of shit for his actions, but... He was definitely one of the early ones. Definitely one of the early ones. Mr. Thompson, you don't want to stay in Arkansas. You want to go somewhere else. Come to a real school, damn it. I don't have time to try and swam on these horrible opinions that he has. Unfortunately. Let's see, McCutcheon. Are we out for this guy? I haven't offered him a scholarship yet. We're definitely not out for this guy. Let's talk, Mr. McCutcheon. Scholarship. And let's shit talk Ohio State if I'm allowed to. Which it looks like I'm allowed to. Beautiful. Imagine wanting to go to a post-secondary establishment 10 minutes away from mommy and daddy. Right? Rich, he needs to grow up. He needs to be a man. Like you. Teach? Rich, how would you like a job? <laughs> I need you to help convince these kids to be men. 
Not boys anymore. They're men stepping onto the gridiron. We need Richard Head to teach them how to be a man. You can sing as many songs as you want to, as long as they're off of the Mulan soundtrack. Rich, how much to get you to uh, to cover a song from the Mulan soundtrack? <laughs> I want this in my life. Tan is one of those players with a low IQ and drive, but he has talent. Not a great combo. Fair! Let's quote old ESPN top 10 clips that were on before they were born. Well, Rich, as long as it's talking about how to get down to the business to uh, defeat the Huns, then we're in luck because that's the one that I want. Choose pitch. Richard Head's your assistant coach. I'm in. I'm, I'm down. I feel like you could uh, find better teachers than that. Richard Head would be the ultimate teacher. The ultimate. Come on, you don't want to go into the Air Force? Jesus, so at least if you're going to spurn me, join the Navy. I always forget how to say it backwards, though, like in The Simpsons. If you sign, Richard Head will give you a free TB12 kiss. It's not weird. It's not weird. That's just a sign of appreciation around here. It's part of the program. You know? Mr. Cunningham. Talk some trash about Boise State. And, uh, God, we still got people on the board here. Jason Green, that's how we do it in Massachusetts. Is Massachusetts better than Tugachusetts? I don't know, I'm kind of biased towards Tugachusetts. Richard Head's college name is Young Rich Money. Is it? Let's see, I am not going to be able to talk that much trash about Bama. All right, really quickly, back to the top. Gotta make sure I cover visits this week, so Mr. Long. Let's, uh, let's hope that you care about playing time. Mr. Hicks. Sell you on here. I know you're not very interested in that, but I'm still going to sell you on it. That guy can't tackle worth a damn. Who else is ready for a visit? Mr. Franklin. Not much I can sell you on, and that is it. All right, let's see. What we're dealing here to. What we're dealing here to. What we're dealing here to. Let's see what we're dealing here to at the University of Tugachusetts where English isn't our specialty, but we can win some football games sometimes. We can win some football games sometimes. No extra recruits. That sucks. What jersey am I rocking? It's the infamous Chris Rumble jersey, man. The easel on roosters of the DEL. It is the Rumble jersey. We got a lot of these guys on soft commits without scholarships, which is pretty nice. Uh, we are down into second for Eddie Payne. Still very much in the running. Alright, Ed. Let's see what we can do for you. Actually, Long, we're in first for. Let's talk to Clint for uh, 20 minutes here. 
talk some more shit about Oregon. Hopefully Clint will sign here. That would be great. How many scholarships do we have left? 12, was it? It was 12. Okay. Honestly, because we don't need anything, I think we just leave everyone on the board. Like last year, we had a certain number of players that we needed. This year, it's just first come, first serve. Like whoever we get is who we get, and I'm not too worried. Not too worried. If they sign here, cool. If they don't, as bad luck folly would say, fuck them. Fuck them. We don't need to go elsewhere then. Be nerds. Go elsewhere and watch as we rise to the top. And watch as I talk more shit about the University of Oregon. At least in the few avenues that I can. Mr. Davis is on a soft commit. That's what I like to see. Can't really trash talk Illinois at all. At least not for any important categories, which kind of sucks. Uh, Mr. Hicks, let's fully scout you out here, Kevin. I want to know how good you are. A 78. Not bad. Again, problem. I can't trash talk Notre Dame. So I can't help but think that they're going to win. We'll see what happens. Uh, Mr. Payne. Four hours here so I can schedule this visit. Trash talk UNC a little bit. Trash talk UNC a little bit more. Not too bad. Mr. Payne. Let us talk. Let's see. Davis tight end. We're now in first for him. Ooh, he might be drifting towards gem territory. That's what I like to see. Let's get you for that visit this week. Talk some shit about Oklahoma State. And talk some more shit about Oklahoma State. I picture the meeting going along the lines of the walk-in saying, Oregon fucking blows. Walk out. I mean, that's what I'd do. I would be that upfront about it, for sure. Like, why, why lie? It's gonna be like, look, man. Oregon fucking sucks. Sign here instead. Hey, nice talking to you. Do you want to be... Do you want to be a duck? Or do you want to be a minute man? Where you have a built-in pickup line at the bar about how, ha ha, not actually a minute man. And then, I mean, come on. And then you get... Anytime someone brings up... Fucking... Movies, you get to shit talk them and say how do you like them apples you know Who the fuck was I just talking to <laughs> you, you think they'd appreciate that <laughs> it was Coleman you think they'd appreciate that I get out of the meeting who the fuck was I just talking to it's like you know I feel really confident about coming to this school he, he does a great job of making you feel special as a leader of a program Portland, Oregon is the worst Portland. True! Shout out to Portland, Maine. A city I have not been able to visit for over a year now. Uh, you can check my Instagram to see the last time I went to Portland, Maine. And saw a Maine Mariners game and a player by the name of Nuttle. N-U-T-T-L-E, if I'm not mistaken. I missed that, man. Gordon Nakoka, he plays in Japan now, which is pretty dope. And I don't use the word dope often. But that's pretty dope. Professional hockey in Japan? Who wouldn't want to do that? You don't even have to be good. Just get to chill out in Japan and play hockey? Like, that's sick. Everything about that's amazing. Mr. White, I'm embarrassed for you that your name is not Walter. Let's shit talk Oklahoma State where I can. Uh, somewhat ineffectively up until that last one. Jesse Fritz. Good old Jesse Fritz. What do we got for you, Jesse? Week four visit for you. Again, you don't want to go to Air Force. Go to the Navy. Join the Navy. The Dangle Navy. 
can watch the games on YouTube. Matt Nuttle, that's the man. The myth, the legend. Who needs a Ty Ronning jersey when you can get a Matt Nuttle jersey, you know? Darius, what do we got for you? Can't really shit talk Northwestern at all. That kind of sucks. Let's see, Mr. Cunningham, who we are currently in first for. Let's get you a visit this week. Shit talk USC a little bit. Excellent timing on the Breaking Bad joke and NCAA. Right? It's very topical, Rich. Very topical. The number one show on TV, Breaking Bad. I hear this new show, Game of Thrones, is looking pretty sweet, too. A little bit worried about the, uh, a little bit writer about the author. You know, a little bit worried about the author that the books are based on. I don't know if he's ever going to finish those books, but I'm sure he will. The show is going to end on such a high note. Now I'm sad. This is not the first time we've mentioned Game of Thrones while playing NCAA 13. And it makes me sad every fucking time. Mickey! Mickey Jones, Mickey Jones. His name's Mickey Jones, Mickey Jones, Mickey Jones. I sure hope the Kings win the cup. You should bet on it, man. You should bet on it. I got faith in the move. Alright, 2.30 left. Let's just use it the quick time, people. Uh, let's do like a half... Uh, yeah, we'll do like 40 minutes for Zach Avery. And trying to lock that down, that guy down without a scholarship, which would be pretty sweet. I should just start a season two of Game of Thrones. Booch, I mean, number one, it's an amazing show. The last two seasons are controversial from people who are really into the show. But it's 1,000% worth the watch, man. 1,000%. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. Rich, Jesus. The funny thing is, you saying that, he's going to be like, well, shit, is it actually a spoiler or is it not? Who's to say? I do like the term small fellow, though. Heading into our final week of active recruiting. What do we got? Anyway. Hey, we got dangerous Danny Davis. Four star guard. This O line is going to be nasty. Can play a ball time. Yes, my favorite Game of Thrones character, Paul. I love that man. I love that man. Oh, God. I mean, I know the, the joke is more about Paul Walker, but now I just want to imagine a character in Game of Thrones named Paul. Ooh, Clint Long's on the soft commit here. Interesting. We're looking pretty good here. It's just a matter of who signs and who doesn't. Uh, let's talk to Mr. Long for a little bit. The pride of San Dimas. A little shit talk, Oregon. <laughs> he drifted the dragon too fast. Jesus Christ, man. Oh, God. It's funny, right around that time was uh, the last time I played ESHL with a, a group of certain people. We had a big team, and the team fractured because some of them hated me. <laughs> Can't imagine why. But then others still probably hate me, but they stick around, like Richard Head. <laughs> Before the wow. <laughs> oh, Rich. Oh, Rich, you tried so hard. If I lose out on a player to fucking Ball State, I'm going to cry myself to sleep tonight. Fuck you, Ball. Get out of here with that nonsense. Uh, Mr. Scotty Davis. Not bad. Race car backwards. Race car. Race car sideways. Paul Walker dead. 
Wow! <laughs> oh boy, alright, so just fucking Paul Walker death jokes are just in season, huh? And here I thought he died in November. Was it October? I don't even remember. Jesus Christ, guys. Can we change the fucking topic? My God. <laughs> what has this chat turned into? I miss Paul Walker a ton. He was in some underrated shit aside from the Fast and the Furious, which isn't underrated shit. It's just shit. God. The new duck season, rabbit season, right? Kinda wish you were ball state. I mean, the jokes would be out of control. I was making a Paul Walker dying joke. I just picked Paul as a generic name. It's too late, Smiles. It's turned into its own beast. It's too late for that. It is too late to apologize. It's too late. The joke's off and running. Welcome to the internet. Your intentions? Fuck your intentions. This is what it turned into. Deal with it. Now, how are you going to manage it, Smiles? Your name's attached to making Paul Walker died jokes on the internet. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Fast and Furious was good until 6 came out. Again, I had never seen a Fast and Furious beyond Tokyo Drift. <laughs> I mean, I, I get to even watch them as, like, hey, they're kind of shit. Fun, bad movies to watch. But, uh, I just never... Never got around to, uh, checking out the rest of the series. Never did. Although, again, I do want to shout out, uh, Paul Walker for being in some pretty goddamn good movies, man. God, what the hell was he in that I really liked? I kind of forget what Was it The Lazarus Project? Was that what it was? It was The Lazarus Project. That was a pretty good movie. Uh, Matt White. Should talk Oklahoma a little bit more. Smiles and Coco are in the same group as 9-11 joke danger. Okay, now like a Paul Walker joke, sure. I guess. I'm sorry. But, I don't know how I feel about, you know. I don't know how I feel about, uh. I, I personally am not comfortable with people making 9-11 jokes yet. I'm just not. If somebody does, they're like, ah, comedy. Like, if it's Pete Davidson, he's like, ah, comedy. It's how I dealt with my dad dying. Then, like, sure, who the hell am I to tell him that he's wrong? You know? But Vin Diesel sucks. <laughs> um, you know, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen Vin Diesel in a movie in a while, right? I haven't. Vin Diesel's finest film is probably The Iron Giant, though. Let's be honest. That is still probably his best movie. Because let's be honest, I haven't seen too much else that he's actually in. Dude, his best work is when he's a voice actor. As The Iron Giant and his group. That's clearly his best work. He should clearly stick to being a voice actor. And he voice acted one of the Chronicles of Reddick games that, were, uh, that was amazing back in the day. So, yeah, Vin Diesel should stick to voice acting. But how else are you going to show off those sick biceps, dog? Look at my traps. Unless you're in movies about exploding cars. You know? I understand his dilemma. I get it. Sometimes it's like, ah, face for radio, but you just got to show off those traps. You know? I get it. Same, same struggle, man. Same struggle. I totally understand him. He's a singer-songwriter, too. That he is, because Vin Diesel is a man of, of many, many talents, let's be honest. Oh, Smiles, let's not get into the fucking Jesus jokes, please. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Yep, there it is, Smiles, there it is. Oh, God. Yep, he, he went for it. He went for it. Hey, West Virginia. Fuck off. Nobody cares about you aside from the fact that you had a song written about you that was then covered 30 years later and played to death. Oh, boy. All right. 
let's just quick call these dudes and see if they'll sign. Time that fucker. <laughs> Smiles, I might have to I might have to bop you. Can I just like purge a message? I can't. Smiles, it stands. I don't stand by it, but it stands. What the fuck's a Shenandoah? <laughs> you know, it's it's been some of the names here that I've I've been very impressed by. Shenandoah is something else, man. Rich, that's the best part of these games. I was looking up what random fucking cities have randomly been added into the pool. Guys, we have 11 scholarships left. Some very good players that still might sign with us. We advance to signing day. Let's see where we will finish in terms of recruitment classes. We had the number one class in the nation last season. I am excited to see what we can do. Oh, goodness. Wish I could time smiles. <laughs> I mean, I can bop him if enough people want me to. It's just the pain of having to, uh, you know, type unban that I'm just far, far too lazy to do. Bop me so I have motivation to shower and go to bed. No, dog, I clearly care about my view count a ton. You can self-bop, can't you? <laughs> I forget how to do it. You can self-bop somehow. Someone could pay to bop him. Someone pay five cents to bop a man. Alright, come on. Big day. Big yes, yeah, Long. Bullock. Fritz. White. Woods. Thompson. Gonzalez. Bra oh my god, guys. Oh my god. I also got three more kickers, apparently. Despite the fact that I pulled scholarships. Holy shit, this recruitment class, guys. Wow. We might have the number one class in the nation again. Holy shit. So for quarterbacks, we did not get Victor Walker. He goes to NIU instead. We were in first heading into the final week for him. So Victor Walker walks away, uh, which is fine. We didn't really need him. Wide receivers. We locked down three options in Dusty Thompson. Yes, West Memphis. Let's go. Uh, Matt White and Jesse Fritz. So we missed out on Austin McCutcheon, which is fine. Uh, Mickey Jones, Marvin Cunningham, and Jason Green, as well as Justin Gray. So we were in first for like all of these dudes in the final week. We only got three of them. Tight end wise, we missed out on Scotty Davis. Again, we were in first for him. He just randomly decides to go to Washington. The O-line. Five tackles. Bell, Sol, Rush, Nelson, and Anderson. For guards, four guards. Davis, Foster, Harvey, and Smith. And one center in Mike Bates. We have an O-line now, guys. Defensive line, we missed out on Zach Avery, which is fine. I tried to recruit him without a scholarship. He goes to Tennessee instead. Linebackers, uh, Foster elected not to sign. Payne goes to Virginia Tech instead, which kind of sucks. Middle linebacker, we missed out on Derek Cook. Eh. Corners, we got both of them, though, and Brian Bullock and Clint Long, which is great. Safety, we missed out on Eddie Hammond. We were just trying to get him for nothing. Kickers, we locked down four kickers. <laughs> Wilkinson, Beck, Hand, and Peterson. And then for the athletes, we only got one. We missed out on Hicks and Franklin, Coleman as well. But we got four-star out of El Paso, Texas, Jason Woods. Do we have the number one class in the nation for the second year in a row? Drum roll, please. No! We finished ninth. It's another top ten class, but we finished ninth in the nation. The highest ranking for a squad that did not recruit a five-star player. So that's not too bad. I think now four straight years or three or four straight years that we finished inside the top ten. But ten four stars, eight three stars, seven two stars. For 25 new recruits as a three prestige uh, program here. Which is the lowest ranking for any program inside the top ten. <laughs> I'm very happy with that. I mean again, we focused heavily on special teams and the O-line. And we locked up a ton of players. And then not to mention, the flip side of that, 
is of course we didn't really need anybody else. Hello, Coco. The footballs are going well. These balls are looking great. The problem is we just reached the longest part of any setup, which is figuring out player positions. Which really sucks. So we have three quarterbacks. We can end up with more than that. This is the this is the part that takes for goddamn ever, right? So what we have to do, Daryl Grant can't really play anywhere else. Again, this is the guy who I kind of compared to Cam Newton. Uh, Alpha, we went 10-2 this season. Won a bowl game. We missed out on winning the conference, though, because we lost to UConn. So we clearly have Daryl Grant at quarterback. Kevin Hawk is also clearly a quarterback, which is pretty nice. But then there's Will Cox, who can play in a variety of different positions. And this is where it gets to be problematic, right? So, in terms of where he can play, uh, he can be a 79 rated QB, a 77 rated running back, or a 71 rated wide receiver. For now, I'm going to move him to be a punter, and then we'll figure it out from there. Running back. So we have Ryan Butler, who's now a junior. Honestly, again, he can play in multiple different spots, but I feel like it's obvious he's going to be the running back. Um, again, he could be a wide receiver or a fullback. The good thing is we have fullbacks. I mean, I think it's obvious Butler's going to stay at running back, but for the moment, I might move him. But, yeah, pretty much guaranteed to stay at running back. Coco, good job there on your first bop. It was it was deserved. <laughs> uh, man, yeah. I mean, this guy can play pretty much anywhere, but yeah, it's fairly obvious he's going to stay at running back. But I just want to, uh, you know, explore all of our options here. We'll move him over to punter. Tony Bright. Same thing for Tony Bright. I mean, I'm telling you, so many of these guys are dual position. Um, 81 rated running back, 74 quarterback. Probably wouldn't put him at fullback at a 67. So 72 wide out. Yeah, no reason to put him anywhere where he's below a 70. So, again, someone else who probably stays at running back. Uh, Dwayne McKeon is a running back or a wide receiver. Not sure where we're going to put him yet. But a 79 rated running back. And a 73 rated wide receiver. We'll move him over to punter for the moment. Paul Newton. Same thing. Clearly a running back or a wide receiver. Probably leave him at, uh, at running back. I think we're going to leave the majority of these guys at running back. But we do need to see what our wide receiver setup happens to be. So dual position option for him. And then we have Trent Nelson who is very clearly a running back. It's his best position by far. So we'll go over to running backs, and uh, Nelson is on the board. Good old Fig Newtons. Fullback-wise, James Smith. Ooh, James Smith is a decent little, uh, decent little running back. Also a 69-rated fullback. A 72 rated wide receiver. You see what I mean about how frustrating it is to try and set up this team. When so many dudes can play in so many different spots, it's a nightmare, man. An absolute nightmare. Really quickly. Uh, Wilcox, 59. Was there anybody who was like a 60 at fullback, aside from Smith who actually played fullback? He's a 46. Bright's a 67. I might have to mark that down really quickly. Like I said, explore all of our options. We know Butler is a uh, phenomenal fullback. And then Newton's shit. Okay. So the other fullback we have right now is Jeff Washington who I think clearly is a fullback or a tight end. I'm not sure which. He'll probably go back to fullback, but for now, 68 fullback. 
and a 67 tight end are the two options for him. Wide receivers, oh boy, Sean Sims and Tom Adams are both seniors, as is Barron. Sims, oh man, this is this is going to be tough to figure this out, guys, I'm telling you. 84 running back, 86 wide receiver, he'll likely stay at receiver, let's be honest. The funny thing is, he can play on the defensive line as well. For as much sense as that would make, he's also not the worst linebacker in the world. I don't think we'll need him. And he's also not the worst defensive back in the world. He is fucking ridiculously versatile. Tom Adams. You see, you see this is why I did these edits off stream last season. Because holy shit. So he can be a 78 quarterback. A 79 running back, an 85 rated wide receiver. And unfortunately, it's not as easy as just putting everybody into their highest rated position because we'd have overload in too many spots. So, let's see. Graham Barron is a 75 rated running back, an 82 rated wide receiver. Of course, we have all those athletes we're going to have to sort through, too. Marcus Tyler, another dual position option, who is a 78 running back, 81 rated wide receiver, a 67 rated tight end. Probably won't play him there. Yeah, he's not good enough anywhere else. Brian Schuler, same thing. God damn. 71 rated quarterback. A 76 rated running back, 78 rated wide receiver, can't play the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Dusty Thompson, new addition, what do we got for old Dusty, 71 rated running back, 75 rated wide receiver, is that it for our new freshman recruit, it is. Frank Green. Same thing, dude. Honestly, for the most part, it's probably going to come down to uh, the individual attributes. But a 72 running back. Canadian, what's going on? I am doing very well. In the middle of a tedious process, but doing quite well. No complaints. Matt White, new addition. Let's see. A 70 rated running back. A 71 rated wide receiver, which is what we recruited him as. Can't play anywhere else. And then Jesse Fritz. Let's see. So for Fritz, we have a 70 rated running back, a 70 rated wide receiver. Can't play anywhere else. Okay. Tight ends. Let's see. Mr. McCray. A 77 rated fullback, a 79 rated tight end, uh, averaging about a 69 overall on the O line, which, let's be honest, we don't have to worry about playing him there. We don't really know where we're going to play McCray yet. It probably will be tight end. Adrian White is a 74 rated fullback. A 76 rated tight end, and about a 66 on average on the O-line. And then Daryl Holt can play in a lot of different spots, man. 77 rated running back, a 72 rated fullback, a 76 rated wide receiver, a 74 rated tight end. So this is why we have to double check at the start of every year because based off of our strengths and weaknesses, it might make sense to move Holt from tight end to one of the four other spots or three other spots is actually good. And then we got to the O-line where Joey Sowell, I mean, let's be honest, he's a 64 rated full or a 65 rated fullback. We have plenty of other options that can play fullback. So I think for the O-line, there's really not much else we're going to have to check. 
It's just going to be pretty much moving everybody over to center and then sorting it out from there. So we pretty much know how the O-line is going to shape up this year. So many new recruits, we can get rid of a lot of these leftover depth options from last year. Yeah, none of these guys are really going to be good anywhere else except for fullback. And that would be a complete waste because we know we at least have two players who are decent enough fullbacks. God, I love that the O-line's not going to be a problem this year. Thank God. Might have gone overboard, but I don't hate it. Defensively, this is where it gets interesting, though. This is really where it gets interesting. Because it comes down to... Oh, man. It comes down to do we want to base it off of speed or base it off of overall, you know? But we have Teddy Palmer, who is uh, an 84 on the D-line, but about a 76 at linebacker. Not really good enough to play safety. That would be a waste. Zach Weeks. Can't play anywhere offensively. He is about a 76 on the D-line. And a 71 at linebacker. Chris Dickens. Can't play anywhere offensively. Let's see, Dickens is about a 76 on the D-line. And a 70 at linebacker. Don't know where we're going to play him yet. And then Jason Beverly. Can't do anything offensively. He is a 73 roughly on the D-line. Uh, Palmer, I, I agree, Santa hasn't exactly developed as much. Beverly's clearly on the D-line. That's his best spot. So we at least know where uh, someone's going to be playing, right? Which is pretty nice. Alright, so yeah, Beverly is pretty much locked in to uh, playing the D-line here. Which is nice. We're going to move him over to defensive tackle really quickly. On that right-hand side, Craig McNair. Can't do anything offensively. Only up three overall since the freshman year. I mean, he will develop a little bit more once we get to that section. Uh, so hopefully we see a nice little plus four, even a plus five. That would be cool. So McNair's an 81 on the D-line. About a 74 on average at linebacker. I don't really know where we'll play him yet. He'll probably stay on the D-line, but it's at least worth looking. Because then the debate comes down to individual attributes versus just putting someone where they're at their highest overall. But Holman is a 77 on the defensive line. 70 at linebacker. We don't know where else yet. That's it. Andrew, what's going on, buddy? You missed out on some racing a little bit ago. Seems your sleep schedule is rather screwed, huh? We have Stewart, who is a 76 on the D-line. And honestly, not good enough at linebacker. I think Stewart we keep on the defensive line as well. Alongside Beverly, so we at least have two options there, guaranteed. So defensive tackles, Thomas House. Uh, I mean... Only place on the, uh, I mean, he has 53 speed, right? Like, there's no way we'd play him at linebacker. So, House stays on the D-line as well. Thompson has 63 speed, so let's be honest. He stays on that defensive line as well. Stewart, we know, is staying. What about Jaron Williams? I mean, Williams only has 65 speed. I wouldn't want him at linebacker either. So Williams is going to stay at fell asleep 30 minutes before the Blues game. He missed a hell of a game from my understanding. Let's see, Walter Sanders, same thing. Leave him on the D-line. So in terms of like true D-line options, we at least have six dudes right there. There's probably going to be more. 
Linebackers. Eric Bailey. What the hell are we going to do for him, man? Can't do anything offensively. Let's see, Bailey is about an 80 on the D-line. But an 81 at linebacker. And technically, I mean like a, god damn, he's like a 79 and a half in terms of being a defensive back. 81 speed. I mean, that guy can play just about anywhere. Roddy Bradley. Let's go to quarterback really quickly, check the offense. So Bradley is a 77 defensive line option. Basically a 76 linebacker and kind of like a 74.5 defensive back option. This is the issue, especially with how fast some of these guys are. Where the hell do you play them? Let's see, Javon Young. So basically it's, okay, figure out where the players are in terms of their best overall, but then also sort it out by attribute. But Young's about a 73 on the D-line, a 72 at linebacker, uh, and under a 70 at safety. I'm sure we'll have better options. So he's clearly D-line or linebacker. We don't know yet. Figure that out. Uh, Rory Harrington can't do anything offensively. Harrington is about a 70 on the defensive line and a 69 at linebacker. Kind of in the middle. Uh, Santa, we finished 10 and 2. Won our bowl game convincingly, but did not win the conference title. We lost to UConn in the last week of the regular season. All right, let's see. Mike Carr. 65 wide out. Let's see. He is a 79 rated defensive lineman. About a 79 rated linebacker as well. And an 80 or so rated safety. Mike Carr can play in so many different spots. Adam Wade. No offensive options. Jesus, man. How are we going to sort this, guys? Do we just do it by... Because he's an 82 defensive lineman. But also a 79 rated linebacker. It's like, do you put people in their best overall position? Or do we go a little bit more in depth and look at the stats? You know? He's also not the worst safety option in the world. We wouldn't play him there, but this is nuts. <laughs> sort of by girth. I would if I could, man. Because it's all about the girth. I want to be the girthiest team in the nation, you know? Is that so much to ask for? Williams, 77. A defensive line option. About a 76 at linebacker. And a 74. I always get picked last. It's okay, Rich. It's about how you use it, right? It was way to five star. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Maddox. Can't really do anything offensively. Maddox is a 71 defensive line option. A 70 rated linebacker option, but a 74 at safety. Jesus, what am I going to do for this team? Outside linebackers on the right hand side. Mr. Bowen is an 8. Oh my god. So Bowen's an 87 on the defensive line, an 84 at linebacker. And about a 79.5 at safety. Clint Gordon. And again, this is before some of these guys get their off-season development. Let's see, Gordon is a 79 defensive lineman. About an 80 rated linebacker. And about a 78 rated defensive back. Russ Clark. Can't do anything offensively. This guy's probably going to be cut fodder, if we're being honest. But a 63 defensive line option. A 63 linebacker option. And a 63 safety option. Cool. Alright. And what do we have? We get to the corners. Daryl Moore. Oh boy. 
It's a 70 rated wide receiver. An 82 rated corner. Honestly, if I look at this, 82 plus 81 plus 84 divided by 3, and he's about an 82 rated defensive back. Let's be honest, he's going to stay at defensive back. I think that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Some more will stay. I don't think we had a single linebacker stay. No, we didn't. Wade Guerrero's a tough one. I played him on defense this season, but he is an 80 rated wide receiver at 6'5". It was very tough to decide where he should play. We finished recruiting, correct. So this is the look at the full list of talents we'll have this year, although we have not seen their off-season development. So he's an 80-rated wideout, but also an 80-rated defensive back. So he'll be in one of those two spots. It's just that we want him on the offense of the defense there. Stephen Bolden, 66-rated wideout. Let's be honest. You're going to be in the secondary. So we got Mr. Bolden and Mr. Moore staying no matter what. Seth Robertson. Let's see, for old Robbo, he's a 73 rated quarterback, a 74 rated running back, a 70 rated wideout, and uh, decent enough at a uh, secondary option here. I mean, 79, 76 plus 71 divided up by three comes out to about a 75. Clint Long, one of our new additions. It's actually kind of decent at uh, a wide receiver, but there's a lot more competition there. He obviously stays in the secondary, so a good addition there for Clint Long. Let's see, Brian Bullock. Same thing, stays in the secondary. Don't know if it'll be a corner or safety, but he stays there. Ivan Sims, 62 rated wide out. Very obviously stays in the secondary. One Bruins prospect he thought would pan out, but didn't. Uh, Tommy Cross. First name that came to mind. John Brown. Oof. All right. Another tough choice. John Brown. 72 rated running back. A 70 rated wide receiver. So again, this guy can play anywhere for us in terms of giving us decent depth. And about a 72 rated defensive back. I have no idea where the hell he's going to play. And then Joel Beck yeah, is without a doubt best in the secondary. So we do know kind of a, a good list of players that are staying in the secondary so far. Let me get to our safeties before we get to our athletes. Wendell Justice is a great name. Uh, he can be a 71 rated QB, a 75 rated running back. A 73 rated wide receiver. And about, a, about an 80 rated defensive back. Let's be honest, we'll probably keep him at defensive. Yeah, Wendell will, uh, Wendell will stay here. Let's move him over to corner really quickly. Wendell Justice is staying in the secondary. Ideally, it's one, two, three, four, five. And then safeties. Michael Perry, 68 rated wide receiver, significantly better in the secondary. Uh, we're going to leave Perry there as well. Let's move him over to corner for the moment. Chris Boyd. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> oh, Boyd. He can. Uh... <laughs> that was for you, Rich. I hope you enjoyed. Beach to the punch. This guy can play in. A couple of different spots, and I don't know where the hell he's going to play. And then Terrell Lewis, 66 wide receiver, 
is better in the secondary. So we still need a few options in the secondary. Granted, we have two other safeties to sort through here. 67 wide receiver for Daryl Ball. Clearly at his best in the secondary. And good old John Goodman. We don't know where John Goodman's going to play yet. Let's see, Goodman, a 71 rated running back. A 75 rated wide receiver. I will say about a 76 as a defensive back. He could be pretty much anywhere we need him to play. So we got a lot of roles to fill. <laughs> we have a thousand kickers. Everyone else we moved over to a punter. Let's be honest, just move that guy over there and then all the punters are just our, our athletes essentially. So in terms of the athletes, we only have two. Antoine Gonzalez, who can be a 78 rated QB, or, okay, clearly he's a quarterback. That's not even a question. That's not even a question. So he is our third confirmed quarterback. And then Jason Woods can't really be a quarterback, can't really be a running back. He's barely a wide receiver. That dude's clearly a secondary option. Uh, yeah, Sam, a couple dudes signed without me actually trying to even get them. So <laughs> it was all line and kickers for sure this season. So right now, then, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 dudes for the secondary, which in theory I'd want, you know, the top five to be corners, and then one, two, three, four, five. So, I mean, we have enough, depending on whether or not we wanted to redshirt people, but we don't necessarily need anybody else to move over to the secondary. Which means we have a shitload. How many defenders do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Technically 22 people who can play defense that um, that can help fill out linebackers. So I think I had Sims written down as someone who could play defensive back. If I'm not going to move him over. So in terms of the offense then... We have to consider someone like Guerrero at wide receiver, maybe, instead of in the secondary. We do have quite a few dudes that could play elsewhere in terms of the offense. So then really quickly, or at least I hope, we do have three quarterbacks already. We could redshirt Kevin Hawk. And that way he and Grant are on different years. I definitely want to run with Grant. Like, this guy looks so good. But aside from that, the dudes that can play quarterback are who I have to look at here. And unfortunately, there's quite a few dudes that we have that are capable of playing quarterback. By my count, we have six other dudes that can play quarterback. But can also play different uh, positions here. So it's Cox who has that as by far his best position. I feel like we're going to have a lot of competition at running back too. So I think, uh, I think that might be decided there. Bright's definitely out of quarterback. Adams could also play. I know I'm doing stuff off screen. Just trust the process here. Got the list down to three other dudes that could play quarterback. All right. So it's down to Cox, Adams, and Robertson. Again, we have, what, three dudes. 
I think ideally we'd have like five quarterbacks. I think the problem is we take out Adams because he can clearly be a dominant wide receiver. He's like an 85 wide receiver. There's no reason to move him to backup quarterback. So I'm thinking the two other dudes we're going to move over to quarterback are going to be Will Cox. I mean, he's a 79 rated quarterback, but a 77 rated running back. We definitely don't need him at wide receiver because it's only a 71. So I think just by far, put him at quarterback. Um, he's never really going to be a focus. He's not really fast enough to be a good running back. Like, he, he would be more of a power back, for sure. He's a big dude. 88 throw power, 82 accuracy. I mean, you could argue the merits of him at quarterback, him at running back. But right now, it's just more about proper depth. Uh, so we'll move Will Cox over to quarterback. And then we're also, I mean, this dude's incredibly versatile. We're also going to move Robertson over to quarterback just for the sake of proper depth. He's a 73 rated there. He's a 74 running back, 70 wide receiver, and technically about a 75 as a defensive back if you look at the averages. Um, it's tough to say that he shouldn't be a corner with that rating. I guess the argument would be at quarterback then. Do we want to just settle for four dudes? Gonzalez can't be red shirt. See, I think the reason why we bring in Robertson there is because the secondary is already going to be stacked. And that way I can redshirt Grant and Will Cox. And then we have, or Hawk, I should say. We can redshirt Hawk. Now we go Grant, Gonzalez, and Robertson at quarterback. Now we've recovered for injuries and we get to redshirt these two sophomores. So, I hate to say it, but Robertson, while he would be very useful in the secondary... He's just got to kind of take the hit for the team. And uh, we're going to move him over to quarterback for the season. The season. Running backs, right now we only have one defined running back. Let me see, out of all the dudes that can play running back, which is the vast majority of the dudes in the conversation here. The vast majority. Isn't Hawk already redshirted? Ah, uh, he might have been, and if he was, then so be it, I guess. Just wait until the training results. I can't. I can't. We have to move them before we get the training results. That's the problem. You have to make these decisions. But the reason why I think I'm all right with Robinson or Robertson is because I think we're going to redshirt him anyway. I mean, because we're not redshirting Bolden. We're not redshirting Daryl Moore. You have Long, who's going to need that playing time as well. I mean, we could just run with only redshirting one of these dudes. Yeah, Hawk was already redshirted, you're right. So I guess it would be Grant, Hawk, and Gonzalez with Cox getting redshirted. That's a good catch. We'll move Robertson uh, back into the, uh, the secondary then. That's fair. So we'll still have three quarterbacks. We might technically have to uh, move somebody else, but that's okay. So quarterback is Grant, Hawks, Gonzalez, and Cox, and then into the secondary, we will move Robertson. Okay, running backs, man, I, whew, this is tough. This is tough. There's a lot of competition here. I think at this point, we just move these people into the best rated position, and it'll work itself out. So, Adams is a 79 rated running back, but an 85 rated wide receiver. We are definitely going to move him back over to wideout. No question. Uh, Tony Bright, by far his best position is running back. And that is where we shall be moving him. So he's our second confirmed running back on this team. Uh, man, Schuler's close. Where is Mr. Butler? Ryan Butler's definitely getting moving ba uh, moved back to running back. I mean, he's going to be our star running back for the most part. Like, he and Bright should be a pretty good one-two punch, if we're being honest. Oh, boy. From there, Sims... 
our star wide receiver. He's an 84 running back, but it's obvious we got other people who can cover it. He's good on the D-line. He's good as a linebacker, but his best position is at wide receiver. It's his senior year, which scares me that we're going to lose a player of that caliber. He and uh, Adams, for that matter. Uh, McKeon is a better running back than wide receiver. So we'll move Mr. Dwayne McKeon over there. God, it's like a puzzle, dude. This is my roster editing, basically. Uh, who else do we have? Newton. This team is going to be sick, though. I agree. Uh, Newton will be moved back to running back instead of the proposed move to wide receiver. So we're definitely going to have some red shirt options, some cut options in some of these key positions. Uh, Barron is a significantly better wide receiver than running back, so we'll move him back to wide outs. What else do we have here? There are some tough calls from here, though. Some very tough calls. Uh, where is Green? He's not the best player in the world, but Frank Green will stay at wide receiver. Instead of going to running back, we shall indeed. Let's see what we got. Man, this team is going to be something. Thompson, wide receiver, as you were scouted instead of running back. It's tough from there, man. I'm going to rule Goodman out of the running back conversation. I'm going to rule Brown out of the wide receiver conversation. Holt, I don't know yet. Rule you out of the tight end conversation. Where is Smith? This dude can play in a variety of different spots. To be honest, I considered him for the fullback conversation. Actually. I don't know what to do with that guy. We have reached the, uh, the toss-up portion of this conversation. I think we're going to move Schuler to wide out. He's a little bit better there than at running back. Two points better. So Schuler gets moved to wide out. Brings us up to six. And we have five running backs at this stage, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I mean, Butler and Bright are going to be deadly together. And then wide receiver wise, that's looking pretty damn good, too. Even if we have some seniors, you know wide receiver will be on the uh, scouting list for this year. From there, instead of focusing on running backs, I want to focus on fullback tight end options. I feel like that's the easiest way to sort from here. We got to figure it out. Still a lot of dudes who I don't know if they're playing offense or defense this year. So tight end wise. Again, O-line, we're really not going to need help. Which is nice. Honestly, I think all the dudes that could be considered for fullback or tight end, I just rule them out of the conversation for running back or wide receiver. So let's see then. And I think obviously we base it on who's the best tight end because that position's way more important. So first and foremost then, uh, McCray, as expected, going back to being our top tight end. That one's fairly obvious. I think we might only have three tight ends this year, maybe four and a fullback. 
I think we have to go with two fullbacks, though. Uh, next up is Mr. Adrian White. Move him back over to a tight end. And then Holt. Also move you back over to tight end. So the tight end group stays the same. I thought we might have more changes there, but we don't. So from there, I guess we have our two fullbacks. Same two as last year. It's going to be Jeff Washington. And Mr. James Smith. All right, so not much change there. But again, like you got to do your due diligence on this stuff. So fullback and tight end, we're good then. Now it's just still trying to sort this fucking mess out. I think I have seven players left that can play multiple different positions. Some on offense, some on defense. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen defensive backs already. I need to check to see who else can play defensive back now, essentially. I gotta solve I keep having to jump around like okay, I'm solving a defensive issue now. I'm solving an offensive issue now. It's a defensive issue again. It's a nightmare, man. But it's a sign that we have just a stupidly stupidly versatile team. Which is great. So and really quickly on the defensive side of things. I have yet to sort out the linebacker stuff, but defensive line we already got six dudes. Alright, Mr. Palmer. No doubt Teddy Palmer goes back to the defensive line. I, he's just far too valuable there. Significantly higher rated. So Teddy Palmer. Back to the defensive line. Gives us seven players in that position. Mr. Weeks, same thing. Also significantly better on the D-line. We'll go ahead and put him there. Uh, Dickens. Mr. Dickens, you get to stay on the defensive line. I told you guys this was going to be a process. I told you. Uh, McNair, to be honest, you're not that bad at linebacker, but again, you're more useful to us on that defensive line. I wish I could have you at quarterback, but I can't. Uh, Holman. He is a whole man. Defensive line for you. And then the other two are toss-ups based off of fill-in players. Alright. The good thing is I'm getting this list down to the point where it's just dudes, so it's like, okay, where do we have a shortage? Put them there. Bowen's too good to be a defensive back. So he's in the defensive line, linebacker category. Gordon can play pretty much anywhere. Williams can play. Pretty much anywhere. Take Wade out of the defensive back category. Okay, I think, I think, I think. So let's see, we got a linebacker conversation now to sort through. I don't know how many dudes that could actually play linebacker I even have at linebacker right now. I think we've uh, I think we've just about cracked the code here guys. I think we got this team set up. Yeah I have no linebackers so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and two depth. I think we got our linebackers. So Eric Bailey. Congratulations. Mr. Bradley. Congratulations. 
Mr. Carr, you're not bad in the secondary, but we need you at linebacker. We have Maddox. You're our only Maddox, right? Yes, you are. Gilbert Maddox will be a linebacker. And then Big Bowen, he's great on the defensive line, but we have enough defensive line options. He's technically an 87 on the defensive line, but he's an 84 to 83 linebacker. We need him at linebacker. Same thing for Wade. He's a, about an 82 rated defensive line option, but he's got the skills to play at linebacker, and that's where we need him. Same for Javon Young, the senior. We have Harrington on the list. We're going to move him back. Gordon. Again, this dude can play. It's like a 78 rated safety. 78 to 79 on the defensive line, but he's definitely a, a linebacker for us. Just out of necessity. And this list is almost done. Get David Williams. Move him to linebacker. And Russ Clark. Move him over as well. So those are our linebackers. We know the O-line is sorted. So now the only question is, out of these seven, where do we need the depth the most? Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have 12 defensive backs, which, you know, is okay. How many running backs do we have? Five. Oh man, this is tough. So Boyd can be a 76 running back or a 75 defensive back. Brown can be a 72 running back or a 72 defensive back. Goodman is a 75 wide receiver or a 76 defensive back. Fritz is a 70 running back or a 70 wide receiver. Guerrero is an 80 wide receiver or an 80 defensive back at six foot five. Tyler is a 78 running back or an 81 wide receiver. And then White is a 70 running back or 71 wide out. So the fact that White's three points better at receiver, we're going to put him there. Or Tyler, I should say. I think I said Tyler. He's going to go to wide receiver. So technically now, it's seven wide outs and five running backs. That's a tough call. I think we're going to make the switch. We're going to move Guerrero, perhaps, from defensive back to wide receiver. Although, there are four players already higher rated than him that are also going to get a boost. Whereas in the secondary, I don't know how many dudes... There's only uh, one dude higher rated than him right now in the secondary. I think we keep Guerrero in the secondary off of that. But there is a lot of depth in the secondary, man. That's a super tough call, but I think the fact that Guerrero will have a better chance to be a starter in the secondary is why we put him there. So Wade Guerrero stays on the defensive side of the ball. It's now our 13th option in terms of the secondary. From there, Boyd's a slightly better running back than secondary option, so we'll move him to a running back. Goodman is slightly better in the secondary than at running back, so he'll obviously go to safety, but he is going to be in the secondary. White is a little bit better as a wide receiver over running back, so we'll move him to wide receiver. Then from there, it is six running backs and about eight wide receivers. Brown will go to running back. Fritz will go to wide receiver. All right, this team is uh, pretty much set then. I just have to sort out like O-line, D-line, and where everyone's going to play. But our four quarterbacks are Grant, Hawk, Cox, and Gonzalez, the athlete we just recruited. Running back, it is Butler, Bright, McKeon, Newton, Boyd, who moves over from safety, Nelson, and Brown, who moves over from corner. Fullbacks are the same from last year. It'll be Smith and Washington. 
wide receiver wise Sims, Adams, Barron, Tyler, Schuler, and a new wide receiver. I thought it was an athlete, it glitched out, but a new wide receiver addition in Thompson, Frank Green, and then Matt White, Jesse Fritz as well. So some new additions there. Three tight ends stay the same Aaron McRae, Adrian White, and Daryl Holt. And now we got to sort out the O line here. And again, we still don't know player development for the non freshman recruits. But really quickly, then, these are all the O line options, and there are a shitload of them. Let's see what we have. So Derek Smith uh, drops by two. McRae only drops by one there. Montgomery barely moves. Foster, same thing, barely moves. Nelson actually gets slightly better at tackle. Same thing, Davis gets slightly worse. Mays gets better at tackle. Bennett gets better at tackle. Bates is about the same. Sobel gets better at tackle. Curtis, same thing, slightly better than a guard. Okay. I think we know where our boys are going to be then. It's pretty easy to tell who should be a tackle and who should be a guard then. And then these guys here are probably just going to get cut. I don't even think I need them. So let's just like move McDaniel over to punter. These are the low rated dudes that it auto signed for me last year. We don't need you anymore. Okay. So Smith, McRae, or Montgomery. The lowest agility is Montgomery. So it's Montgomery and McRae who should move out. Derek Smith is going to be our starting uh, our starting center. So McRae drops by one to go to guard. So does Montgomery. So we're going to have McRae on the left. Montgomery on the right. This O-line is already going to be sick. Foster. Nelson gets better at uh, tackle there, so Foster is going to take a bit of a hit going to left tackle, but it's already significantly better. Uh, Davis, honestly, could just leave him there. Mays gets better at tackle. Bennett gets better at tackle. Bates can play pretty much anywhere. Let's put Bates over at guard. So we'll put a tackle. I know I'm moving everyone to left tackle. It's just easier to keep track of. Let's see, Todd Harvey, keep you a guard. Anderson, move you over to tackle. Rush. And Sonny Brown. This team is going to be so much better behind this setup. Honestly, let's move uh, let's move Davis over to guard. Yeah, that looks better. So so will be the right tackle. So it's Foster, Mays, McCray, Bates, Smith will have someone behind him, Montgomery, Davis, Nelson, and Soul. Uh, Kassar, yes, I am well aware that it was the, uh, the anniversary of one of the finest clips in the history of the world. I still have it here, don't I? I know I do. Who do you think you are? I am! There's a reason why we have it on standby, buddy. Alright, so really quickly then. We have our five guards. It's one, two, three, four, and five there. And the rest of these guys, and honestly, it doesn't really matter where the hell they go. We'll move Curtis back over. Also, we'll move Bell back over as well. You can stay there. You can go there. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Five, six. All right, and we'll move uh, this guy over to guard. So we, uh, needless to say, have some O-line depth now. <laughs> needless to say, 
We have some fantastic O-line depth, new and improved to say the least. I'm so excited for what this season could bring. Defensive side of things, we also need to sort out. So Teddy Palmer is good no matter where he plays. Thomas House clearly has to be a defensive tackle, which means it's best to just move Palmer over. McNair can play anywhere as well, so I think we have our answer then. Teddy Palmer will go to the left, McNair will go to the right. So we have House. Thompson's better if he stays. Stewart only drops by one. Thompson dropped by four. So Stewart only dropping by one, we'll move him over. Dickens only dropped by one, we'll move him over. Weeks. He's good to go. Holman's actually better over there. Williams would drop. Sanders would drop. Beverly gets better. All right, so the defensive line then. I mean, we have Palmer, Weeks, and Stewart. We also have McNair, Holman, Dickens, and Beverly. And defensive tackles, Tommy House, Cedric Thompson, Jerron Williams. We're still looking really good now in terms of our total depth. And then linebackers. Bowen is one overall point better. Carr drops. So Carr can definitely stay in the middle. Bailey's one overall point better. So we'll put Bailey out on the right. Bowen out on the left. Wade is good no matter where he plays. So this is the choice now, chat. What do you think? For those of you who have stuck with me here. And I appreciate you for doing so. We have Palmer, McNair, House, and Thompson. So we could run a 4-3. And who knows how good it will be, because again, these guys are going to get better. Or, we could run a 3-4 with Bowen, Carr, Wade, and Bailey. I'm leaning towards another 3-4. Or like a 3-3-5 or some shit like that. I think we have to go with the extra linebacker over the uh, over the uh, extra defensive tackle. And that pretty much solves itself. But if anyone wants to make an argument for something different, I would appreciate it. Rich, is that video with you and Crash actually playing? Uh, available. I need to see a school crash, Anders. So Wade should be good there. Gordon's better on the outside. Uh, Williams is actually better on the inside. Bradley's better on the outside. It's kind of crazy how uh, how much depth we actually have here at linebacker. I can't believe this. How much depth do we have in general on this team? It's phenomenal, really. 335 for the speed in the secondary. I and mean, it's definitely an option. God, we're gonna have the pretty much the go-ahead to play however the hell we want to play, which is awesome. So you have the linebacker core, Bowen, Gordon as a depth option. Carr, Wade, Williams, so someone might get redshirted. Maybe even Adam Wade gets redshirted. It makes sense. And then Bailey, Bradley. Okay. Then here, Daryl Moore is a fucking great safety. He really is. I want to see what happens if I put everybody into their best position, I think. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it just happens if I go off of overall here. We'll leave Guerrero there. We'll leave Bolden there. We'll leave Robertson there. Strong safety is always very, very difficult for people to play. Sims can play wherever. Goodman's better. Lewis, better on the outside. Beck, slightly better. Woods, significantly better. So if we were to go with this, I mean, these would be the six dudes who aren't significantly better at safety than they are at corner. Which is a pretty damn good start, because our top three dudes are all going to get better, and Bullock's not bad for a freshman. But then safety, obviously, we're going to be able to move other people over. So Moore's an 81. 81 for Ball. So it makes sense to have Moore and Ball be the safeties. Justice, it's kind of a kind of a tough call. As to where to play him. So the argument could be here. Like, Ball's clearly the strong safety. With more or justice, because they're going to get better, 
it makes sense to move one of them over to corner. Although that would leave Bullock out as the fifth option. Unless we redshirt Bolden or Guerrero. So it's going to make sense to move one of the top few players over to corner. Just not sure who. Yeah, this, this secondary setup really does depend on what we want to do in terms of redshirting this year. But Ball is clearly our best strong safety. If it's not Daryl Moore, and it makes sense to have Moore stay there. Yeah, we have to move certain people back over to corner. There's just way too much talent sitting here. So Justice drops by four. Long only drops by one. Perry drops by three. Goodman drops by a ton. Lewis drops by a ton. Woods drops by a ton. So clearly Long gets moved back over to corner. And then here we do need some safety depth. So Justice drops by four, Perry drops by four, Goodman only drops by two, so we'll move Goodman over. Lewis drops by three, Woods drops by one. So that is gonna be the, uh, the depth then. So at corner, we're looking great. In all honesty, safety, we're looking pretty damn good as well. Can make the argument for like Lewis to go back to corner or whatever, but doesn't make too much of a difference. And then we have a thousand kickers. <laughs> We're obviously going to cut these two who are guards moved over to kicker. It's kind of hilarious. They suck anyway. They're just, you know, fill-in players. So from here, it's obvious we just kind of look to keep the best two. Maybe the best three or four. Wow! Wilkinson has no kick power whatsoever. I'd say none of these guys are ideal. Like, he's accurate, but he just has no power. Shit. Okay, well, those two have more accuracy. Train them up as kickers. Then, honestly, Hand has the power, so I don't mind moving him over to punter. Just he can boot it down the fucking field. Again, some of these dudes weren't offered scholarships. They just signed with us anyway. So, I mean, Peterson's definitely out. Noble's got the good accuracy. Clark has some good power. Wilcox has some good power. Let's move Wilcox over to punter. Let's move Clark over to punter. <laughs> and just sort through this as best we can. Alright. So the accuracy, Peterson just sucks. The accuracy, the accuracy. Okay. That's pretty much what we're looking like here. We'll have to sort through it and just select the best. We're good. It takes forever, but this team is set. This is what it looks like before. Imagine if I accidentally hit no. This is what it looks like before the upgrades. Let's see now what we get from the training results. So you see why the last time I did that off stream? <laughs> But tonight, I'm just like, I don't care. I'm getting this done. I am absolutely just getting this done. So here we go, chat. The main event of tonight will set up everything else tomorrow. It is the training results. Here we go. As we'll start off at quarterback. Grant, Hawk, and Cox are all 83s. Which is nuts. So Cox will get redshirted, and then shit, next year we could redshirt Grant. We have a decision to make there. One of these guys gets redshirted this year, the other guy gets redshirted next year. <laughs> Potentially. We're going to have to figure out who we want to use sooner rather than later between Grant and Will Cox. But needless to say, in the aftermath of Kenny Cobbs graduating, we have some decent options. Running back-wise, Ryan Butler is now an 89. Tony Bright is an 85. Dwayne McKeon an 83. So we have some great depth at running back as well. Love to see that. But yeah, Ryan Butler rocking an 89 right now. Fullback-wise, James Smith will be the starter. He's a 73. Washington at a 71. 89, Sean Sims at wide receiver with 88, Tom Adams. So whoever 
the quarterback happens to be, they are inheriting a pretty dangerous receiving core here as well, and that doesn't include the freshmen. Tight end wise, Aaron McRae is now an 84 with 279s behind him. It was a plus five there for Daryl Holt. On the O-line, Sammy May is up to a 79, Bennett 78 behind him. McRae up to an 83 now as a sophomore. Curtis up to a 79, a plus five there for the senior secondary center. Montgomery is up to an 83. Nothing there for right tackle. Teddy Palmer up to an 87 as a junior now. Stewart and Weeks, good depth behind him. McNair is now an 86. He has some good depth behind him, to say the least. And House is also an 86. This team's going to be nuts. Thompson at an 81. This team is going to be so good. Holy shit, dude. 88 overall, Brad Bowen. He'd be a 90 on the D-line. Gordon's an 83 behind him. Couple 83s between Carr and Wade. Williams as well. And Bailey now an 84. This team is stacked, dude. Corners, 285s. Guerrero and Bolden. Robertson now an 83. At safety, 88 rated Daryl Moore with 85 rated Wendell Justice behind him. Somebody has to get red shirted. Perry's there as well as a senior who has already worn the red shirt. And then it's uh, strong safety, Daryl Balls an 83 with Goodman up to an 80. Kicker, Darius Smith improved. He's up to a 76. This team is disgustingly deep. Oh my god. Honestly, I it might be overreaching. But to say that we should be able to hit a rank by the end of this season, I don't think is an I don't think is putting the expectations too high. I think we could finish if we play our best as a ranked nation or as a ranked team in the nation. We do have to cut 17 players. Uh, obviously, that starts with Ryan Thomas and McDaniel. Yeah, if we don't unseat UConn, I'm going to be furious. Um, in terms of the other kicking options here, obviously, I hate to say it, but like Austin Noble and Cliff Peterson, these guys are going to be out. We just ended up with better options. Honestly, I think as well, I'm just going to cut... I'm just going to cut the junior in Smith. We don't need him anymore. It'd be better suited to give someone else time. So Darius Smith is going to be gone. And then from there, I mean, I think we uh, we keep Wilkinson and Beck. I'm going to keep Hand as a punter. But then Wesley Clark and Lionel Wilcox. We're going to cut these two as well. So we'll carry three special teams options. Just to see who develops the best, essentially. Yeah, oh yeah, Biscuit. We're going to have to start playing some tough competition too, no doubt. Uh, running back wise, I don't think we necessarily have to cut anybody immediately. Uh, same thing at wide receiver. The O line, you could get into the conversation of maybe cutting someone like Randy Rush, who's only a 63, and then Brown, who's only a 60. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12. Yeah, I think we can afford to cut someone like Sonny Brown. Sonny Brown's actually three stars. We are going to get rid of the Juco uh, Randy Rush. Makes sense to get rid of him. On the defensive line, nobody to immediately cut. We still have to get rid of nine players, though. I don't quite know how I'm going to do that. Clark might have to go. Honestly, it's going to be kind of tough to cut anybody else from here. You could say David Beck should go. I'd really like to keep him, though, as a three-star. You could have argued maybe put one of those two at punter naturally. I could still cut Daryl Hand, but I want to try to make that work. I can't afford to cut a quarterback. So we're probably going to have to look at running back, and I think it's going to be John Brown. Just because he's been redshirted already, it makes sense to cut John Brown. Because Boyd, Newton, Nelson can all be redshirted this year, and we can just run with Butler, Bright, and McKeon. So, John Brown, sophomore. Hate to tell you, Johnny. Uh, you got good speed, but we're going to go ahead and cut you. And then at wide out. I mean, we can't redshirt Sims or Adams. We're probably going to redshirt Marcus Tyler and just hope he doesn't get too pissed. So, it's definitely going to have to be a receiver heavy. Uh, core. Um, I think at that point we're looking at Schuler and Green. 
So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Red shirt, Tyler. So Brian Schuler, 6'3", sophomore. I hate to get rid of him, but we're going to get rid of Schuler. We're also going to get rid of the sophomore, Frank Green. Still need to cut six other dudes. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Let's get rid of Sonny Brown. Probably end up at UConn. Um, we can also probably get rid of Josh Anderson as well. Gets us down to just four dudes now that we need to cut. Nobody I really want to get rid of there. Linebacker-wise, is a fairly obvious shout. When we're cutting an 81 receiver, this is a good team. Exactly. I can't wait to see our rating. We'll cut Russ Clark. Two, three, four, five... Again, we have the option to redshirt Guerrero or Bolden. It's at the point where Sims or Beck could be cut. We could also afford to cut one safety. It's not going to be Jason Woods as a freshman. To be honest, I think we're looking at cutting Terrell Lewis, as insane as that is. It would still leave us six safeties, though. So 78 overall senior. He's already been redshirted. Terrell Lewis is gone. And from the corner situation... We're going to cut Joel Beck, who has already been redshirted as well. What do you guys think? Do I just boot David Beck? That's the easy decision, is to just boot David Beck and run with hand. Then we don't have to worry about special teams for four years instead of trying to choose. I think that's what we have to do. we got to make a choice here. You could argue move the other guy over to punter, but that other guy has a great boot. That we can, uh, as mentioned, make happen. I think it's got to be it's got to be David Beck. This dude has some great accuracy to build upon. So David Beck is going to be cut. We are down to seventy, and again, hopefully Daryl Hand with that boot that he has works out for us. We were ten and two on the season, and we are heading into an incredible situation moving forward. I am so excited, dude, to see where this team's going to be. Because I can't help but think it is going to be a crazy, 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 crazy season for us, man. It really is tough to not see that as the situation that we're looking at, right? Damn. Problem is, I don't know if we're going to get a look at this team before I have to set up the schedule. And it's already getting late. <laughs> It's already getting late, man. I thought, yeah, I'll end tonight early. And now all of a sudden, like, we're looking at this off season. It's been crazy. God, I just wish the loading times were a little bit faster. Uh, so obviously conference we're not changing. Bowl tie-ins we're not changing. It does get us to the preseason. Um, I do have to hit some promises on the custom schedule, but maybe this year we don't care as much, or we just turn into Road Warriors with tougher competition on the board and really test our merit. That is certainly an option, is to just really stack up the deck against ourselves here. Oh boy. All right, let's, uh, fuck it. We're going for it. Let's do it. So red shirting players will be first, as we always do. So quarterback-wise, oh, God, guys, is it Daryl Grant or is it Wilcox? To be honest, we could redshirt both and run Kevin Hawk with Antoine Gonzalez as the backup. Or do we give one of these two guys an opportunity? We have to redshirt one of Cox or Grant. Grant, I thought for sure, slam dunk is our starter. I thought for sure Grant was a slam dunk starter this year, but we could save him for the future. And then hopefully he doesn't get pissed. But again, 6'5", 237 as a scrambler. I just love it. Doesn't have as good a trucking or brake tackle as Cox, though. So Cox is like a power scrambler. <laughs> Grant has a bit more finesse. Running back wise, uh, fairly obvious here. I would, uh, I'm not sure I'd risk both getting pissed. That's fair. Let you guys debate that out. Uh, Boyd, Newton, and Nelson are all getting redshirted as running backs. 
We're gonna go with Butler, Bright, and McKeon. Red shirt on, bring back Cobbs. <laughs> I wish. Cobbies, what's going on? I hope you're doing well. Guys, let me know what you think here. We can red shirt. We can't red shirt Gonzalez. So Hawk's gonna be on the team. Gonzalez is gonna be on the team. Are we carrying one other of Cox or Grant, or are we red shirting both of them? That's the question. Uh, fullback wise, we are gonna red shirt James Smith. That way, Jeff Washington will be our fullback. Wide receiver again. I cannot risk red shirting Sims or Adams. We need them both this year, so we are gonna risk red shirting Marcus Tyler. And that way it'll be Sims, Adams, Barron, and our three freshmen. Tight end wise, we have our three. On the O-line. Actually, a tough call on the O-line here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Ideally, we'd only need to carry like eight offensive linemen, maybe nine. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Six. So I can afford to like red shirt. I mean, what? There were 13 guys. I have six other dudes that are ready. So we're not going to red shirt McCray. He's too valuable. Okay. So clearly we can red shirt one of Bennett or Mays. To be honest, Mays is just a monster. I think I'm going to try to red shirt Mays. I'd rather let Bennett go. Maze is a monster. But then again, you could argue use Maze this year and hope that Bennett improves for next year. <sighs> but imagine what Sammy Maze could be with a little bit more development. A little bit more development for Maze or just use him as he is. Honestly, I think we have to use him as he is because we're looking to really improve this season, and he's clearly the better. So Jake Bennett, we're going to red shirt. Michael Foster will be behind Mays. At guard, we're going to red shirt Mike Bates. And if he chooses to transfer, so be it. I don't care. At center, we're going to red shirt probably Mike Curtis and run with Derek Smith. Same thing as Mays. Although we could redshirt Derek Smith and just let Mike Curtis play out his senior year. Honestly, because of that, I'm going to redshirt Sammy Mayes. Bennett will play at left tackle with uh, Michael Foster. Left guard McCray definitely plays. Bates gets redshirted. At center, I'm going to redshirt Derek Smith. Hopefully he doesn't leave. If he does, so be it. And then we'll run Mike Curtis. That scares me a little bit. But that way we get three more years of Smith and we let Curtis use up his last year. Not redshirting anybody there, not redshirting anybody there. I I gotta be a little bit risky here. I gotta think about this season and the future. On that defensive line. We're not gonna redshirt any of our best options, so it's clear there the only guy getting redshirted is Zach Weeks. So I'm not gonna redshirt Teddy Palmer. Although I could redshirt Teddy Palmer and risk him, but there are some guys who I think are just a bit too good. I mean, granted, I'm redshirting an 85 wide receiver. So, I mean, it's Stewart. But the problem is, too, like, they're just, they're too good to risk. Like, that wide receiver, I have better wide receivers ahead of them. Uh, we're definitely not going to redshirt House, either. I can't believe Brad Bowen's a senior already. That breaks my heart. We are going to redshirt Clint Gordon, which if he chooses to leave, we're fucked. But it's the risks you got to take to preserve the future. In the middle, I'm going to redshirt Adam Wade. So it'll be Carr, Williams, and Maddox. Tough call from there because we technically have one, two, two, three. And ideally, I'd have like three more dudes for proper depth. Actually, hold on. So it's one, two. I like that five outside linebackers. Three, four, five. I think that's the play. Granted, in the middle. Yeah, because we have the three there already. There is the argument to maybe red shirt Bailey. Let Bradley play out the season. Maybe even David Williams. Ah, oh, man, I'm so torn between what, you know, how to play for now and the future, you know? I mean, losing Bailey, we'd still have 
Bradley or Williams to back him up. But imagine having that extra year. I might redshirt. If I don't redshirt Bailey, I'm redshirting Harrington. This sucks, dude. <laughs> There's so, so many tough choices to make. Damn. I gotta go back to that, too. I gotta figure out the quarterback situation, the right outside linebacker situation. At corner. We have to redshirt one of Guerrero or Bolden, ideally. Because it'd be one, two, three, four. We only need five. I hate it. <laughs> we got a red shirt, one of those two. And then at safety, we got a red shirt, one of these two. Ball plays. I mean, I guess it'd be one, two, three, four. I guess technically we could red shirt ball if we wanted to and let Goodman play. Oh, God. Uh, and then at kicker. Hunter, we're good to go. So to double check then, at quarterback, I wanted him. I, I pegged him to be our starter. It's going to be Grant, I think. There is the option, though, to run with Hawk and Gonzalez this season. But then we just end up into the situation where we have to choose between Cox and Grant because they'd be on the same timeline if they're both redshirted. So it makes, sure, it makes sense to redshirt only one. Will Cox is going to get the red shirt. It'll be Grant, Hawk, and Gonzalez this season. Running back-wise, again, we have our top three. And Butler, Brighton, McKeon. Fullback-wise, Smith will be red shirted. We'll go with Jeff Washington. Wideouts, it is Sims, Adams. Tyler gets red shirted. You got Barron, Thompson, White, and Fritz. Tight ends, the three are starting, no problem. On the O-line, we're going to red shirt Sammy Mays. Could possibly redshirt Bennett as well, but then it's just the same problem next year. So we'll redshirt Mays because I think next year, you know, in his true senior year, if he stays here, he could be an absolute monster. With his strength, his acceleration, if you get that awareness and agility up a little bit higher, he is a beast. So here we'll have Bennett and Foster. McCray is too good to redshirt. We're too reliant upon him, so we redshirted Bates. And again, at center, Smith has been redshirted. We're going to go with Mike Curtis in his senior year. We got Montgomery, who again I value a little bit too much. So what we'll do is uh, redshirt Danny Davis next year. And at right tackle, it's Nelson and Soul. We got Palmer, Stewart, Weeks on the red shirt. McNair, too good to deny. Dickens, Holman, and Beverly. I, I just don't feel confident sitting McNair. I don't think Stewart, or I don't think Dickens is really a suitable replacement. Is that worth the loss to keep McNair for two years after this by redshirting him this year and playing Chris Dickens? That's another one of those risky choices. Five overall point drop by playing Chris Dickens. I gotta be honest, I'm gonna risk it. We're gonna redshirt Craig McNair for this season. Defensive tackle. I can't believe I'm saying this as well. We're going to redshirt Thomas House this year. Like when we just have so many seniors that have to play, it's worth risking a little bit for the sake of the future. I just have to bank on these dudes not leaving. Grant, Hawk, and Gonzalez. Those three get redshirted. And let's be honest, we've had pretty good luck with people not wanting to leave. We're gonna have to scout out a shitload of wide receivers. So we get three dudes you know, three dudes leaving after this season. So again, honestly, if I were to redshirt, it doesn't make sense to redshirt Bennett. I need to break up he and Mays. So Foster stays. Bates will break him up with McCray, even though it'll make them both juniors. Center situation, we redshirt Smith. Honestly, I could get away with redshirting Montgomery and playing Danny Davis, but I like the idea of playing Montgomery this year, redshirt Davis next year. I just think Palmer's too good. It makes sense to play Palmer this year. We might redshirt him in his senior year. 
It sucks that Stewart has to be a depth option. The only other option is to redshirt Palmer and play Weeks instead. But McNair's already getting us a redshirt option. So we got Dickens, Holman, Beverly, and I need two others. Which would be Stewart. So yeah, either Palmer or Weeks. Palmer or Weeks gets redshirted. It makes sense for it to be Weeks. And that way we keep uh, that way we keep Palmer. House gets redshirted, we'll run with Thompson, Williams, and Sanders. Sucks to lose House, but again, trying to just think of the future here as well. Which is why Clint Gordon's gonna get redshirted. Bowen's gonna play with Young on the outside. I think we keep Bailey in and redshirt Harrington. Although Bradley is a senior behind him. I'm going to redshirt Bailey. So the linebackers this year will be Bowen, Young, Bradley, Harrington, Carr, Williams, Maddox. I am getting very, very risky with some of these red shirts, which is going to include Wade Guerrero. I think I'll play Bolden over Guerrero. Maybe not, man. Guerrero has the 82 catching. Congratulations to Bolden. You're going to get redshirted this year. Then at safety, it's clearly Moore or Justice. We'll redshirt Wendell Justice, with Moore being the better option now. They're both juniors. And then we're going to redshirt Daryl Ball and play Goodman and Woods. This is the most risky we have ever gotten with the red shirt process. We have had some pretty damn good luck in terms of players not leaving. And honestly, that luck is going to have to continue. We are intentionally making ourselves worse in some regards by overall points. Not the biggest differentials in the world. But it will keep this team competitive for longer rather than some initial short-term success that we struggle to maintain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to red shirt Robert Montgomery, and we're going to play freshman Danny Davis. I'm taking a huge risk with these red shirts, man, but if it pays off, we're going to be golden. We are going to be golden. I'm going to red shirt Teddy Palmer for this year, too. Play Stewart as the starter, weeks behind him. Palmer plays, you know, sits out this year, Weeks sits out next year. Do I want to be this risky? Makes sense to play Bowen, whatever. Get Gordon behind him. Makes sense to sit Wade and let Carr play it out. Do I want to be this risky? I think I do. I really think I do. I think we have to be that risky. And just hope that the, uh, man, just hope that we're good to go. Just hope that we are good to go. About to have a card at linebacker. It's not that bad. I mean, we have one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven active linebackers. That's not that bad. Oh, boy. So I will back out of that for the moment. I will think about that. I will think about that. Honestly, we still have the schedules to set up in the initial recruitment board. I think that's where we call it. I sleep on that decision. And figure out if that's how I want to go because that is some risky risky decision making and I need to make sure I, I'm of a clear mind and not overly tired for that